When you think about all the things humans have put their minds to, it's impressive. We built and landed robots on Mars to learn more about space. We conjured up theories about how the universe works and then proved them right. We sequenced the human genome to paint a complete picture of our DNA. But as for the minds that made this all possible, we still don't know much about how those actually work. Scientists have been trying to navigate the mechanics of our large, complicated brains for hundreds of years. What would be really helpful is if we had a map. And in order to get one of those, we're going to need some brave scientists and very advanced technology. So how close are we to mapping the human brain? If we could build a complete map of our brain and translate it, imagine what we could do. We think maybe that will give us clues as to the causes of various forms of mental illness, learning difficulties, diseases of aging, and if that might better allow us to figure out are there treatments or prevent the onset of some of those illnesses. A map of the brain could even help us understand other scientific mysteries, like the origins of consciousness. Our brain is so powerful that if we understood how it worked, we might be able to create smarter robots and computers. There is this technology in our brains, or actually in the brain of every mammal, that allows us to behave autonomously. It is very power efficient. A map of the human brain is seen as so valuable that multiple efforts across the world are underway to get us there. Aside from some big projects in the US, and we'll get to those soon, the European Commission is funding 100 universities to create a detailed computer model of the human brain. China also announced a project to map the brain, and so has Japan. There's even several private projects focused on this goal. So what do we mean when we say a map of the human brain? Specifically, we're talking about creating something called a connectome, a complete catalog of all the structures in the brain and how they connect. We typically think of there being both a structural and a functional connectome. So the structural connectome is the white matter fibers that connect different parts of the brain, or the synapses that connect neurons. And we call that structural because there's a physical synapse there that we can measure and look at. We're kind of making more of a road map of connections among brain regions. But there's also what we call functional connections in the human brain, which have to do with um, kind of coordination and function across brain regions. That means identifying parts of the brain that work together, but don't necessarily touch. We don't have any fully mapped functional connectomes yet, and the only structural connectome we've fully mapped is of C. elegans, a transparent nematode about one millimeter in length. Even though they've been able to do that, it's still a complex organism, and there's still a lot of work to be done to understand how the interactions give rise to even the relatively simple behaviors that the C. elegans can accomplish. The connectome of the C. elegans brain identifies 302 neurons. And if researching and building that connectome was complicated, imagine how exponentially more difficult it is to do the same with human brains, who have somewhere in the region of 100 billion neurons. This is probably the first obstacle scientists have to overcome in mapping our brains, the sheer size and daunting complexity. So they have to start small, and I mean really small. The samples they're studying are the size of a grain of sand. Inside that small grain of sand, there's about 100,000 neurons and form about 1 billion connections. So now our brain is more than a million times bigger than this grain of sand. So you can see how many units are compressed in such a small space. And the brain is always changing, which makes it even more difficult to study. When we're born, the brain grows over the course of development. It builds new neurons. We're learning and interacting with the environment, and that's also shaping brain connections and how different parts of the brain work together. But then it also starts to change as we get older and we move into later in life. To tackle these challenges, the Obama administration started the Brain Initiative in 2014, bringing several scientific institutions together to understand and treat the human mind. As part of that coalition, the Allen Institute is analyzing mouse brain samples to count, catalog, and connect as many different cell types as a foundation for eventually doing the same for the human brain. Using electron microscopy, the team imaged billions of tiny synaptic connections in a cubic millimeter of mouse neocortex. Mapping the brain, at least at the resolution that we do it, 
is difficult because many things have to go right in a series. Preparing the sample has to be perfect. Scientists had to section the grain-sized brain sample into 25,000 pristine slices, 40 nanometers wide. For reference, a strand of hair is five times as thick as that. Then those slices were distributed over six electron microscopes to be photographed. It took us about five months to take all the pictures of that millimeter cube. I don't have the final tally, but there's certainly hundreds of millions of those. This type of data gathering took exhaustive, dedicated work around the clock. When all the images were collected, researchers could then segment each single neuron and create a 3D wiring diagram. Step one towards that complete structural connectome, which the team estimates will take five years to finish. In terms of data storage, it was about two petabytes of data. That's about two million gigabytes from just a millimeter. To eventually work with the bigger human brain samples, something about this process will have to change, as it will eventually be the largest data set ever collected about anything in the world. I think substantial advances on sample preparations, sample sectioning, and above all, the storage of such will be immense. Either technology will have to evolve in a way that such storage is available, or our thinking will have to evolve in ways that we can compress the information that we want to extract from it. We'll also need forms of technology that aren't as invasive as this, so we can study live human brains too. And to develop a really robust map, we're going to need to work with more than just one single brain. We'll need to study young brains, old brains, male brains, female brains. We collected a pretty interesting and unique sample of 1,200 individuals. The Human Connectome Project, led by the NIH, is using non-invasive tools to study human brains now. So the main tool we use to start out is an MRI machine. If we're looking at the structural connectome, we typically use something called diffusion imaging. It's looking at the diffusion of water along these white matter connections in the brain. If you have a nice strong connection going in a certain direction between two parts of the brain, we can measure that. We do something pretty different though when we look at the functional connectome in the human brain. So we still use an MRI scanner, but we use a different kind of sequence. It's looking actually at blood flow that we think happens after there has been neural activity in the brain. So if you're looking at brain activity in a brain region, going up and down over time, you can say, are there other brain regions that show that same pattern? And if the patterns are very similar over time, we call those functionally connected brain regions. So far, the Human Connectome Project has made a lot of advances in this area of mapping the brain. In 2016, they released the most detailed map of the cerebral cortex to date, discovering 97 new brain regions, in addition to confirming the existence of 83 others. We understand much more now about how different brain regions kind of wire up together to form networks. We're starting to get a good sense of how those networks relate to which types of behaviors. Where I think we still have work to do is understanding exactly how those contribute or are changed by the experience of illnesses, how different kinds of environmental factors might have an impact So this challenge is immense. It will push our technology and creativity to their furthest limits. But so did sending robots to Mars and sequencing the human genome. And we did all that. So how close are we to mapping the human brain? The biggest barriers keeping us from building a highly detailed human connectome is really technology. Even my scientific lifetime, the progress has been exponential. So I wouldn't be surprised in 10 or 20 years if we had a sort of dramatic leap in our understanding. I think we may never have a map of every connection in the human brain in the sense of understanding exactly how they interact together to give rise to exactly all the human behavioral and cognitive and emotional abilities. That's a tall order, and I'm not entirely convinced that we will ever be there. Looking at the shapes of those neurons, they are beautiful, they make me happy. We and our collaborators are the first ones to see such detail at such scale on the brain, and that's like the old explorers when they arrived at the new continent. We are going into a territory where things are new,
For more episodes of How Close Are We, check out this playlist right here. Don't forget to subscribe and come back to Seeker for more episodes. Thanks for watching.